If you ask me, what are two words that would describe the 2021 Ravens so far through the first five weeks of this season? I would probably say battle-tested. And the reason I say that, I mean, you see it and you've seen it. Through these first five weeks, you go to the Raiders and y'all go to overtime. Uh, obviously came out on the bad end of that one. Then in week two against the Chiefs, you're down by multiple scores. You come back and win. Um, then against the Lions, oh, everything that that game was, and you come back and win. Then against the Broncos, you beat them down uh, and, and win convincingly. And then you have this game against the Colts where you were down and it was certainly looking like you were out, but they came back and won. So it would definitely be battle tested. Uh, last night's game, just to get straight into it, um, the Colts, they, the way that the game started off and the way that the game was really going for the first like three and a half quarters was not looking good. Um, and it wasn't for me. I know there were some people like, oh, man, the play calling sucks. It's terrible. Uh, no, it was execution. The Giro, fantastic job. It was the execution. Straight up, it was. Because the first series, um, well, they went three and out. They just went three and out. Um, and then the Colts, on, on, that, on their very first drive, we stopped them. Uh, and then they got a penalty that backed them up. We stopped them again. So it's third and super long. So I'm like, all right, Colts, they either going to do a draw or a screenplay. Come on, Ravens. We know, we know this stuff. We, we done been burned by them so much, not just this year, but over the past couple of years. We, we know it's coming. We know it's about to go down. Wink, defense. I know y'all boys got it. Again, either a draw or a screenplay. The running back is getting the ball. They're not throwing no deep pass backed up in a, by their own end zone. They're not doing that. They're, they're not stupid. They Come on. All right, situational football. Let's get it. Set. Carson Wentz gets it. <laughs> Throws it right to the running back. It's like, uh, yeah, we knew that was coming. 74 yards to the house. 74 yards to the house. It was just embarrassing. It was embarrassing. And there was no excuse for it. Um, there was just no reason that that should have went down. It was just a terrible display by Wink on, on that drive and by the defense on that drive too. And really, um, throughout the entire game, the Colts, they had the defense. They had Ravens defense in the palm of their hand. The entire game, entire game. They were running all over them. They were passing all over them. And then in the second half, they began to score all over them. They had the defense in the palm of their hand. They were controlling the clock. They were controlling the flow of the game. Everything was good. The, the, the Colts were dictating that game. The Colts offense were dictating that game. And we know, like, with Carson Wentz, he don't care if it's Wink. He don't care if it's Dean Pete. He does not care who the defensive coordinator is because he is not afraid of the Ravens. We remember his rookie year because y'all know this game. I thought it was going to be like 34-14, 34-17, something like that in favor of the Ravens. But as we got closer and closer to the game, I was like, oh, boy, that boy Carson Wentz. I, I remember those games when we played against Carson Wentz his rookie year. Game comes down to the wire, and it comes down to C.J. Mosley. Shout out to C.J. Mosley. I know a lot of Ravens fans missing C.J. Mosley right now. But shout out to C.J. Mosley because he had to – Knocked down a two-point conversion just for the Ravens to win. And again, the Carson Wentz and his team, the Eagles at that time, they were they didn't have nothing to play for. So again, Ravens did have something to play for, but the Eagles didn't. And when you're playing a team that has nothing to play for, like the Colts last night, those are the most dangerous teams because they are not afraid to pull everything out. They're not afraid to lose because they got nothing. They're sitting at one and three. They were sitting at one and three. They don't have nothing to lose. The expectations are low. So it's like, okay, what's the worst that's going to happen if we lose? What's the worst that could happen? So that was back in 2016. That's what happened with that. And then last year, 2020, Ravens versus Eagles. It, we were blowing out the Eagles. We had a nice lead. But then all of a sudden, Ravens start, they start chilling. They start relaxing. Oh, we got these boys. Nope. Carson Wentz said, nope. Mm -mm. Came back. And then that game came down to stopping them on a two-point conversion. 
So then this time, Carson Wentz was like, look, I'm not afraid of these Ravens. I'm not scared of these Ravens, not one bit. Let me sort of reverse this a little bit. If we was playing Uno, Carson Wentz versus the Ravens, he pulled out that reverse card on us because he and them Colts got out to a big lead. Was it actually leading the game by 19 points at one point? 19 points. But the Ravens, they, they, they scratched, they kicked, they clawed, and they actually came back. But shout out to the Colts and their offense. Um, shout out to their, their coaching staff, the, the play calling. Everything was great. Offense, defense, now that, that got a little bit rough because they lost their corners. But, hey, Raven, you no know Ravens ain't going to feel too bad for them because Ravens literally lost everybody this season. Actually, before the season even started. They lost everybody. And now, and then we'll see what happens with Ben Cleveland because he got hurt. So, and then we'll see what happens with Sammy Watkins because he got hurt. So, Ravens, they, they know how it feels. Trust me. They know how it feels. Um, but that coach offense, again, Jonathan Taylor <laughs> was just killing us all night long, man. Uh, Hines, he got his in. The tight end. And my guy, Coach is Shock, he told me about him. Um, Mo Ali Cox, that he was doing his thing. And the Colts, they, they were catching everything. Carson went, and Pascal, like, I was sleeping on this receiver group. I like Michael Pittman Jr., and he, he showed up. We got his touchdown where he mossed Anthony Averitt right at the beginning of the second half. Mossed Anthony Averitt and then went, oh, you know, I'm scoring. I'm scoring. I got this. With Anthony Averitt, he had his worst game of the season. Worst game of the season. And I, I expected them to bench him uh, in favor of Jimmy Smith, but they didn't. And, I mean, it didn't, it didn't work out for them. I mean, they obviously won the game, but Anthony Averitt still, he, he had a really bad game. Does it make him a bad player? No, not at all. He, had a, he just had his worst game of the season, though. Maybe his worst game ever. Probably his worst game ever. Um, but it was just, it was all kinds of bad. Um, and the Ravens' defense, they were just the tackling. Same stuff. Same stuff. This is the fundamentals, man. It's the fundamentals. And it's like we, we keep hearing these stories about the Ravens. Oh, they've been in practice doing tackling drills. This, that, Oh, they got the pads on today because they want to work on tackling. Where is it? Where, where is that, that extra work that they've been putting in when it comes to tackling? Because that was so much of the Colts offense, too. They were making some great decisions now. But the Ravens made it that much easier when you decide, hey, you know what? I don't want to tackle. I don't feel like tackling. You make it that much easier for them to keep drives alive. We saw so many times last night. It's third down. It's like, okay, here we go. All right, Ravens, just make a stop. It's like third and seven. Ravens, where the initial tackle comes from on a third and seven. Oh, it, oh they just got a four-yard game. Let's go. We about to stop them. But shoot. Break, broken tackle. Missed tackle. Oh, first down. Moodle chains. So, it's just, it, it, it was frustrating to see. Um, and, and frustrating to just see it so much throughout one game. Like, literally throughout the whole game. The tackling was bad. Um, there was a lot of spotty coverage where guys were just running free. And again, shout out to the Colts and their offense because... I certainly underestimated their receivers and what they were going to be able to do against the Ravens. Um, but Pascal, uh, again, Michael Williams, um, is it not Roscoe Parrish. Roscoe Parrish is old school from Miami. Oh, Paris Campbell. There we go. Paris Campbell. <clears throat> got the two mixed up. But they, they got us, and they got us good. So Ravens definitely got a lot of tightening up. That they need to do. We ain't shouting out t Tennessee though. This is a different tighten up. Anyway, um, defense was just oh Tavon Young. Just to go to some defensive players specifically, Tavon Young had a really good game. He had a great game. Now his the the great game that he had. A lot of people almost forgot about it, and a lot of people did forget about it with that last penalty. Because ooh that last penalty was scary because it looked like it looked like oh man we got these boys we straight oh here we go and then you see the flag and you, you saw Tavon push him you saw him push him live and it's like oh boy 
Here we go. Please don't do it. And they called, uh, what they call unnecessary roughness, whatever it was. Um, and with Tavon Young on that play, yeah, it was a bad penalty. Came at a bad time. But you got to, it's tough, man, because these guys, they're not robots. So they have feelings, they have emotions. And, yeah, we wish he would have never done that because that did put the Colts in a good position to win the game. And then even after that, Carson Wentz threw another pass and they got a big completion. So they got even more yards. Oof, and I think it was against Anthony Avon. But with that penalty, you just, um, yeah, it was a bad move. But at the same time, like, yeah, Doyle, Tavon Young was on the ground and Doyle pushed his head to the ground. After the play, way after the play. So he got heated. He got upset. And, yeah, I know you could easily say from all point of view, oh, yeah, you got to keep your emotions in check, man. But this dude, for that, for them to have gone through that game, you know emotions running crazy high. And it's hard. It's hard. So thank goodness that that didn't end the game for the Ravens in a bad way. Um, Humphrey, he had a pretty good game overall. He did give up a play uh, toward the end of the game to uh, number 14 from the Colts. Um, he just straight up beat him. Beat Marlon Humphrey. Caught him slipping. Made a big catch. But other than that, um, he did miss some tackles. But again, the whole Ravens defense, they missed some tackles. Uh, we see a lot of times with Ravens defense, when they get down, you can start seeing them, you can see them start to press whenever it's a team that's, um, that is having their way with the Ravens defense. And we've seen that a lot throughout this season, uh, but whenever it's a team that's having their way with the Ravens defense, you can see that frustration start to set in. So the missed tackles that they were already doing, they turn even, and they turn into even more missed tackles because Ravens get to punching. Or they get to trying to strip the ball out. So, and I understand you want to make a turnover and whatnot. And that is an opportunity for a turnover. Because you never know what could happen. Um, but it does lead to additional yardage um, being given up. So, and that's a hard one too. Because we know how successful, especially Marlon Humphrey has been like last year with the forced fumbles. Um, so, you know, there's always that opportunity and, and that could be a drive changer and a drive killer really could be a turnover. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard because you, you don't want to say, oh, no, y'all should never go for the fumbles. Y'all should never go for the strips because it could cause a turnover. But it's just it's, it's really, really tricky, a uh, really tricky position. But we just want the fundamentals to be cleaned up. Um, it, it seemed like from the beginning of the game. Because the Ravens, did for with four, they just sent four and they got pressure on Carson Wentz. And it was like, oh, oh, this is going to be one of them games. Okay, let's get it. But that stopped. Shout out to Colts for making adjustments fast. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, but our defense, the, this defense, Justin Houston talked about it a couple days ago in a presser. He said, this defense is not where we want to be at. <laughs> and they are not. Felt bad for Justin Houston because Carson Wentz, we know he can move. We know he's a tough quarterback to bring down because because he can move. Um, Justin Houston got a sack, but that was negated because I don't think the sack counts since it was a penalty. But he got the sack, but since he was trying to bring Carson Wentz down, he got the horse collar. And it was like, oh man! And it was like the, a lot of these penalties were just killers, man. There was a really bad one, a really bad pass interference that got caught on the Ravens. Um, I think it got caught on Anthony Averett. But it, it wasn't a pass interference. It was, a, it was a really bad call. And then, of course, that horse collar. Um, the one penalty that I was really surprised at was the, the rough and the passer that they called on the Colts for the Raven. I was like, what? Because we never get those. Ever. We never get those. Ever. So maybe last week, maybe the Ravens done put, put the refs on a little bit from last week. They're like, hey, Lamar is getting hit way late. Y'all step it up. Or maybe Steve Bishotti sent the refs a little something on Cash App. I don't know. But anyway, it was nice to see that actually called. Um, but this defense, Brandon Stevens, uh, he's been filling in for Deshaun Elliott. I really hope Deshaun Elliott is back next week. And that's nothing against Brandon Stevens, but next week is going to present its own set of challenges. And um, if you struggle like this against the Colts, the next week, oh, it, it gets a lot tougher. Um, so, Hulk, but, but the reason I say I want Deshaun Elliott to come back is just for that element of physicality because they're going to need it next week. But we'll talk about next week later. Um, Brandon Stevens, he made a couple of nice tackles. He did give up some plays, too. 
Um, but again, he's a rookie. A lot being thrown on his plate very, very early uh, in the season. <clears throat> and it wasn't anticipated to be like this, but Deshaun Elliott ended up getting hurt with a quad injury. Um, so again, hopefully he's back. So we'll, we'll just see how things end up going. Um, but our, our secondary, they have been, ah, they've been spotty this year. They've been very, uh, spotty this year. Um, I remember last year just being so appreciative of the fact that they actually did a pretty good job with limiting the deep place. We're limiting those big plays. Now they will have the times where teams could dink and dunk and whatnot, but as far as those big plays over the top, they were pretty limited with those last year, to my memory. Um, but this year, it's, it's, and I know they, they hurt, they injured, so you got to take that into account. But it's been, it's been spotty. I mean, really just the defense as a whole. Um, and again, yeah, it's a lot of guys. Obviously, Marcus Peters. Now, Deshaun Elliott for the past couple of games. Um, <clears throat> LJ Fort, he's been gone. Uh, so... We just hope these guys they 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 get it together, um, and they they get it together pretty soon, uh, because the road is only gonna get tougher. It's only gonna get tougher. Uh, now, special teams. Justin Tucker, he kicked the field goal, uh, and I think what well, he only got one point after the touchdown. I think because they Ravens had to get a bunch of two point conversions, so Justin Tucker wasn't really needed too much. Sam Cook, same thing with him. Early on in the game, he was punting all day every day. But later on in the game, they said, Sam Cook, you go sit down too. We don't need you. We, <laughs> our offense, we got to stay out here because we need points. And they certainly did that. They, they started off very slow. First drive, three and out. Second drive, they got a first down. But then they end up going three and out after that. Well, not technically three and out, but they end up having a punt right after that. Next drive, they, they, would, they would take these baby steps every drive where they would move and move and move. And then they would have to punt the ball. They would just stop. And so we knew the offense had potential, but they just needed to really start clicking. And then on their the, the best drive of the first half, they were moving the ball. They were going. It was like, all right, let's go. Here we go, Ravens. Here we go. R-A-V-E-N-S, Ravens. And all that was all that was happening. Got to the goal line. Lamar Jackson. Hollywood was wide open. Lamar didn't see him. I forgot who he threw the pass to, who he was looking at, but he didn't see Hollywood. And then... Um, the, the very next play. So it's like when we saw that, I was like, Hollywood going to get his. Because we've been saying Hollywood has literally been open all year. He's been open all year. But then after that, the next play, Hollywood open again. He beat his man. And Lamar threw a bad pass. Threw a bad pass. So that was all on Lamar. Missed the opportunity. They end up having to settle for a field goal. And then if, if, we, if we go back a little bit before that, a couple drives before that, where, you know, Lamar was frustrated. He started to overthink. End up running into uh, Ben Powers. It was all on Lamar. All on Lamar. Um, so he, again, he's just, I think he's over-processing, over-analyzing, and just really like, man, I, I got to do everything. And then when you see the numbers, I think they said, like, he had, like, 500-something yards, and the Ravens had, like, 560-something yards total. So Lamar had, like, I think they said, what, 96% of the, of the yards that they got? Some like some crazy number like I I don't remember it off the top of my head but I was like ooh that reminded me of that Titans playoff game that reminded me of that um but with um with that being said they I, I did love obviously loved how they turned it around because it made all the difference in the world um and and the thing about this was that I really appreciated shout out to G Row again and shout out to TT and Kiki because again that passing game is not what it used to be. It's not what it used to be. And we already knew Lamar could throw the ball. That, that was old news. Uh, a lot of us already knew that. So every week, even though we say, oh, yeah, what are they going to say now? Lamar proved them wrong again. We already knew Lamar could throw the ball. That was old news. But um, this game was just another showing of that. And I loved how, again, when they started coming back, they were throwing that ball all over the field. The deep ball to Hollywood, perfect, perfect, just perfect. Hit Hollywood in stride. Lamar was getting pressure. We still got it to him, though. Made it happen. And when it came off, when it came off his hand, I wasn't so sure about it. I was like, ooh, okay, here we go. But 
Landed right in the bread basket for Hollywood. He caught it. Touchdown. Boom. Lovely. And Hollywood had an amazing game last night. Again, it was prime time. So you knew he was going to show up. And, of course, then his second touchdown where he uh, caught the game winner in overtime. It's got to be a great feeling. And with Hollywood last night, that was playoff Hollywood. Well, that primetime Hollywood. Because, again, primetime, he always shows up. So this game next week, on it's at 1 o'clock. Hopefully they flex it because then we'll know, like, Hollywood really going to go off. Um, but with Hollywood in, in the game last night, the yak, the yak was great. Hollywood was not shying away from contact. Hollywood was putting his hand in the dirt, turning up field. Hollywood was stiff-arming people. Hollywood was going for that yak. He, he put it all out there last night, all of it. So it, with that being said, <clears throat> He is that dude, man. Sammy Watkins, he, he was helping out last night, but then, of course, he got hurt. And even on the play that he got hurt, well, that was a big hit. But the way that he stood up and, and held on to that ball, but when he went down, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, he, he coming out for a little bit. Because I, I thought that he might have a concussion, but it wasn't a helmet. The helmet, it was, uh, he just got hit in the chest. And somehow that messed up his hamstring. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, but it was just, oof. It was crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, Proche, he got he got a real nice catch on a third down. Beautiful catch with his hands. Duvernay got involved, too. It was nice to see those boys get involved. I thought that when Sammy Watkins went down, I was, I was like, oh, okay, it's about to go to the Ravens for the past couple of years, and Miles Boykin about to have to step up. But the Ravens were like, nope, we're going to stick with the guys that have been here, the guys that we've been rolling with, um, and, so, and, and that's what we're going to roll with. So Miles Boykin, no, he'll just stay on special teams for the night. And I was like, okay, I respect I respect that. Because they, they didn't allow Miles Boykin just because of his draft status and his previous status. They didn't allow him to leapfrog the guys that have been here um, and been healthy. And that's not a shot at Miles Boykin for being hurt, but that's just more so praise for the Ravens uh, for giving what giving the guys what they deserve. So Miles Boykin, I did, I did not see him out there for not one snap on offense. Um, I did see him out there special teams, but no offense at all. Um, but shout out to Duvernay and Prochet. They've been uh, helping out this season. And, and it's been a patient. Like, well, Duvernay, he's been out there a lot because he's been on special teams too. He's been on offense a lot. But Prochet, Prochet is, is taking some patience with him. But that patience is paying off because he was literally out there for the very first play of the offense. The very first drive, very first play, Prochet was out there. And I was like, okay, all right, Prochet, we see you, big boy. So shout out to him. Um, the offensive line, uh, and I know we kind of back and forth between what's receivers, off, but offensive line, run blocking, terrible. Tavius Murray, he couldn't do anything. Tyson Williams, he couldn't do anything. Uh, Devontae Freeman, running, he couldn't do anything. None of these guys, they, they could not do a thing last night on the ground. Nothing. Literally nothing. Couldn't do anything. Um, we, we continue to see why Lamar Jackson is the Ravens' leading rusher because he's the only one like he, he's the only one that has the opportunity uh, to run free. Um, so it's something's got to give with the offensive line. Um, run, run, with run blocking, with pass blocking, they did all right, man. Early on, um, it was a bit rough, but as the game went along, it got better. And better and better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the pass blocking, it, it, it improved throughout, and they started to click more throughout, um, and they started to, to jail more uh, throughout. So that was nice to see. Um, and then Lamar. Well, Mark Andrews first. Let's start with that Mark first. We talked about Mark Keith. You know, we, we're going to talk about Lamar, but let's start with Mark Andrews too. Um, he had, he broke Ravens records. I think he got, he tied, uh, did he tie Dennis Pitter? He, I think he tied Dennis Pitter for most catches by a tight end, by a Ravens tight end in the game. And he beat Todd Heap by most receiving yards by a Ravens tight end in the game. Um, but he, he was amazing last night. And I love how, like with Lamar, and I mean, really, not, not that he doesn't have a choice, because he does have a choice. But I love how this year with Lamar. If one of his teammates drop the ball, whether it be Hollywood, whether it be Mark Andrews, whether it be Sammy Watkins, he'll go right back to him. He'll go right back to him. 
Um, so Mark Andrews, he had a drop early on in the game. He had a drop. <laughs> and then he ended up with, what, 11 catches for like uh, over a buck 50. So, or no, I don't think maybe 147, something like that. But, yeah, he, <laughs> he, he made up for that drop in a big way, in a big way. With the touchdown passes, the two-point conversions, and all the catches, especially the catch that I just knew was going to be a drop. Well, Lamar threw it to him, and <clears throat> he started to catch it with one hand. Kind of caught it against his helmet, and then he got whacked. I was like, okay, I, I wouldn't be mad at if, if he would have dropped that one because he got, he got whacked, but he held on to it. He held on to that thing. I was like, wow. Money Mark showed up, and he showed up in a big game. Because, again, every, every game for the Ravens it is a big game. That's what it feels like this season. But he showed up. So that contract is coming up. I've been seeing a lot of people say, hey, that, that Mark Andrews from last night, they said that was that, that Kelsey Kittle Waller tier Mark Andrews. They said that, that was that Mark Andrews. So, hey, that's, that's the one we want to see every week. And we know he ain't going to go off for 11 catches, 150, and all them touchdowns every week. It'd be nice, but it's not the expectation. Um, but with that, that did put him as a leader in receiving yards for tight ends this year. Um, but I ain't getting caught up in all that, the leader in this and leader in that, because it's, it's week five. So, But it does show that he is doing his thing. He has been putting in work, uh, and it's obviously been successful uh, for the most part. So shout out to Mark Andrews. Now, Lamar Jackson. Mm, mm, mm. Passed for, what, 442 yards, four touchdowns. And, of course, in the, in the fourth quarter, he was just going off. He, he just went off. And they, they picked up the pace. It was like the Colts game last year. Y'all remember? Where the Ravens were down. And then all of a sudden, uh, in the second half, they went up tempo, and that changed everything. So the Ravens were down in the first half of this game, and then they were down even more in the second half of this game. But then later on in the fourth quarter, they started picking it up. Because they had to. They knew what was at stake. They knew what was on the line. And I love, too, how they didn't put themselves in any awkward positions when they had to score touchdowns. Because the reason I say that is because there would be like there like 12 minutes left, like 10 minutes left in a game. Not in the court, but in a game. So in the fourth quarter. And it got you. Were, you we were at the point where it was like, oh, what if they don't convert this third down? Then it'll be fourth down, so they almost have to go for it. But then if they don't get it, then the Colts will be in their territory. But on them third downs, they were getting it. They were converting. And so we didn't have to have that awkward conversation and those awkward thoughts on fourth down. But they they picked it up. They spread that defense out. Lamar was taking check down. That was, that's when Devontae Freeman, that's when he started going off. He was like, man, I'm tired of talk, all these Ravens fans talking bad about me. They want me going. No, not today. So he was making a lot of catches. Um, and I love how Lamar's been taking the check downs this year. That's been, he's been taking the check downs this year. And that can really help him uh, because that alleviates pressure off of you. You don't have to do all those Lamar things every single play. You take a check down, let them do their thing. Let them go get the yards. That's what the running back is there for in a the passing game. And it's, it's sad because that, that was supposed to be Gus Edwards. That's supposed to be J.K. Dobbins because that's something that they were working on is being pass catches as running backs, being more involved in a passing game. Um, but Lamar, with the, uh, the, the second half that he had, the, uh, the fourth quarter that he had, they just took over. And it was one of those things where it was like, man, they got a shot. They really got a shot. And the, the accuracy of the football, the, the, the precision of the football, the dis decision making with the football, uh, he was making quick decisions. He was making great decisions um, and, and winning football decisions. So that just it made such a big difference uh, in the outcome of the game. And that guy, he is amazing. Blank check. Give him a blank check. He deserves a blank check. And I know my guy Josh Hoffman, he was saying with that blank check, they actually need to predate it. So, and he can talk about, Lamar can say, this is what y'all actually owe me from stuff from before. I say, yeah, hey, retroactive pay. I ain't mad at it. So, with that being said, uh, this guy, when he gets paid, oh, it's, it's, it's going to be crazy. 
is is going to be crazy. So I, I now I, and I can continue to see why they are taking their sweet time with this thing. I, I I see why because this deal that Lamar Jackson gets is gonna be nasty. It's gonna be nasty. It's going to be record breaking. Um, it's a beautiful thing that the Ravens uh they will have paid two quarterbacks record breaking deals two so and i know with joe flacco's deal i know it's like oh man he didn't deserve it no he did deserve it he won a super bowl won a super bowl um but it's it's nice that the ravens this transition has just been so smooth from one franchise quarterback to another and they didn't have to go through a uh they didn't have to trash everything they didn't have to start from scratch they didn't have to tear everything down. They just did it. It was just a transition. And it, it has worked out big time. Uh, so Ravens, they 4-1. and one. No, they uh, they missed out on the, the rushing record by 14 yards, but nobody was worried about that last night. Nobody was, especially how that game was going. Wasn't nobody thinking about no, no little stupid rushing record. Not that it's stupid, but that's how I was feeling last night. It was feeling like, oh, that's just that little stupid Russian record. No, yeah, we wasn't worried about it. We was trying to get to four and one, and they did it. So, shout out to the Ravens for pulling through. They definitely still got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do, especially on defense. And offense too. Offense, defense was holding it down early in the first half. They really were. They were holding it down. They only gave up ten points. They gave up ten points, and seven of those points came on that big play. But still, you gave it up. So they only gave up ten points. The offense scored three. Offense had chances. They had opportunities. They just left points on the field. You you, you got to stop doing that. You got to stop doing that. Ravens keep missing opportunities, missing points, and just missing chances. And they, they took themselves out the game. And another thing, too, <clears throat> one, one, one good thing about this, though, despite how bad the offense was playing, uh, despite how bad the defense ended up playing, the Ravens, well, the Colts didn't either, but there were no turnovers. There were no turnovers. No fumble. Oh, whoa, actually, there was one from Lamar and them on that fumble. But even with that, I, I was thinking more interceptions. But on that fumble, because, yeah, I forgot, completely forgot to talk about that play. On the, uh, the fumble at the one. And Lamar, boy, L Lamar, when Lamar get depressing, when he get depressing, uh, and that pressure's on. Sometimes it's his hands. His, his, he he, he got to get some stick But then if he gets stick on, then if he try to throw the ball, then he ain't going to be able to release it. But he got to have better ball security. Got to improve on that when that pressure's on. Because when it, when it ain't no pressure, ball security just fine. Lamar be holding on to the ball. You be thinking he going to drop it, but he don't drop it. But when that pressure's on, that ball security, because, again, because I just feel like he's pressing. He was pressing. Even oh man, it was even a little a little sloppy. Uh, the mesh point, oh gosh, the mesh point with him and Devonte Freeman, it's not there. They ain't got it yet. They need to work on that big time. With Tyson Williams, uh, I think he he has it, but he ain't really get many run opportunities anyway. Um, but again, this is. This is where I underestimated the loss of the J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards because the, the mesh point with them was just fine. Lamar knows them. They know Lamar. Mesh point was just fine. But with these new running backs, they ain't got it yet. Still don't got it yet. So that's something that needs to be worked on big time. But, again, Lamar got to work with ball security because that play, I thought he was down. I thought Lamar Jackson's knee was down. It looked like it. But when the refs were like, oh, it play stands, I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess um, – it wasn't that the play was confirmed. They just had a stand. So, I guess it wasn't enough evidence for them to overturn it. Uh, but then Darius Leonard, he made that Ed Reed play. And Ravens just, they don't know how to stop though. Maybe because they're so tired. They'd be so tight on some of those drives and those games, like against the Bills, uh, when Lamar threw the pick. And then they had opportunities to stop him, but ended up turning into a pick six. Then with that, with the play last night, the fumble, they had opportunities to stop him. But it ended up turning into a, a fumble return for a touchdown. So it got called back because they said it was a forward pass. I didn't really, I didn't see how it was a forward pass. I really didn't think it was a forward pass. But I was like, okay, well, I guess because I thought the knee was down. Um, I guess they had to sort of do like a little quick little makeup, um, a little eye for eye sort of flag right there. 
But yeah, man, um, Lamar got to in in those pressure situations. Got to hold on to that ball, man. Got to protect the ball. Got to. Um. So and then it was all it was almost looked like he uh he fumbled again, but his knee was definitely down. Uh, where I think it was was it Darius Leonard or somebody I forgot who it was, but um it almost looked like he fumbled again toward the end of the game, where he uh I think he faked it to Freeman. Um, but he tried to run it into the end zone. They were on the goal line, and he got sli- he tripped up or got caught, and and he tried to stretch it out, but it came out. But it came out after he was already down. I was like, oh boy, oh, thank goodness, because that was scary. Um, so yeah, man, that's that. Oh yeah, it was on the game. It was on the game winning touchdown drive. Well, not the game winning, the game tying touchdown drive. It was on that one because it was like a minute left in the game, so it was on that one. Um, so. Oh, man. What a game. These guys, yeah, again, all those narratives, throw them out the window. They're broken. Toss them. Get rid of them. Because they don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. He can't throw. He can't come from behind. Can't do this. Can't do that. Ravens can't pass. They don't mean anything. So, shout out to the Ravens. Shout out to Lamar Jackson, the offense, the defense in the first half. Um, But they, they got to be better than this. They can't put themselves. They can't keep putting themselves in those situations, because uh, better teams, better teams will get out on a big lead on you, and they'll keep that big lead. Um, now again, Colts, they are, they are like a, a really good one in four team, really good one in four team. Uh, but Ravens just showed why the records are exactly what they are. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all, and we out.